Hey guys, it's me, Christina, with Mystic Spirits, and um, this is our first how-to video that um, of our how-to videos we're going to start doing. And I was editing my pictures for my website, and I was like, you know, I was like, there might be other people out there that like to edit their pictures, just to bring a little bit more to them. Um, or, you know, or to you, if you add video, uh, pictures to your YouTube videos, um, you could do this too. What I'm going to show you how to do, and I'm going to use Photoshop, is I'm going to show you how to add a vignette to your images, which is pretty much like a little frame that pretty much blocks out all the distractions around your image and really brings your, um main uh, focus really brings it out <clears throat> so let's get started if anyone's wondering this is my picture I took it of my kids so it's my own <laughs> not using anybody else's so what you want to do is over here you have this little dotted circle over here which are your marquee tools if you right click them, you will get rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool. I prefer the elliptical marquee tool because I just like, you know, the circular or oval shaped uh, vignette. If you look right up here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little cross right up there. So you want to put your little cross in the corner or wherever you'd like, you know, you want it to be right around your image then you'd start lower but I put it in the corner and you want to bring it down to the opposite corner and then you want to make sure all four sides are even and I'm sorry if this um, video is kind of shaky I'm having to use one hand to record with because I lost a piece to my tripod so I can't put my computer or my um, camera on it to record so my apologies but once you drag it to the opposite corner you let it go and it gives you this little circle, oval, little marquee around it, which looks like, you know, marching ants or something. Then what you want to do is you want to go up to select, and you want to click inverse. And what that does is that gives you a box around your entire image. And when you make your new layer, everything that's inside in between this box and the circle will be copied and that's where you will fill in so what you want to do next is you want to hit control J and that gives you a new layer with your corner pieces if you look right here there are some eyeballs which that means you can see that layer is visual you can see it so what you want to do is you want to go to your background or your main image and you want to turn that layer off. Just click the eye and it'll turn that layer off and this is what you'll get. It takes this out so you can see what you need to fill in. I'm going to use black but you can use any color that you would like. If you'd like to change it all you have to do is go over here to your color swatches and choose your color. And if if down there it don't show your color swatches you can go up to window and it's right there you click color swatches and it'll pop it up okay so like I said I'm using black and then you want to get your paint bucket which is right there you want to get your paint bucket sorry that's kind of blurry and you want to just start filling spots in and if you get to where you have like these little bitty spots everywhere you can either take the time to click each one or you can come over here and grab your paintbrush and let's make that paintbrush a little smaller and then you can just start painting over those in the same color and you see my circle can't see it there, but if you see my circle you want to try and keep that center circle the center of that circle away from this um, checkerboard because the closer you get the more color you'll get in that area if you go over a little bit trying because you're trying to get really close it's okay because it'll mix in 
But, um, yeah, try not to do it. Not Try, to, try not to go over with it. Next, you want to turn your layer back on. And that's what you get. But see, I went over a tad bit because I had some really close spots. You can either make your brush smaller if you don't want to go over. But like I said, it don't really matter. So next, what you want to do is you want to go up here to filter. You want to go to blur. And you want to go to Gaussian blur. And that's what you get. Now, for my product, my merchandise images for my website, I use, I go down to about 50, which right here is where you can play with your little slider. You can just play with the slider just to figure out, you know, how much of a blur you want to get on your edges. So, let's do a 50. And that's what it would look like. If, it, if your corners, if you think your corners are too, you know, bright, you know, too solid, and you want to kind of blend it in, you can go over here to opacity, and you can use your little slider and change your opacity. So, say you have, you know, your background on your image is white, but you want, you know, or it's kind of a grayish, but you really want to bring it out and just kind of blend it, you know, you don't want that to really stick out to where people are still looking at it, then you can do that. But if you have just a regular picture, for one like this, I would bump it all the way up. And you could still change your opacity just to tone that down some. So yeah, that's about all you do. I'll go through them one more time real quick. You of course upload your picture. You click your marquee tool. You go from your top left corner, drag it down to your bottom right corner. You, cl you click select, click inverse. And you want to hit Control J, which will create your new layer. You want to turn your background or your first layer off. You want to get your paint bucket, your choose your color, click your paint bucket, fill in the spots, the ones that's showing. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you want to turn back on your first or your background layer. You want to turn that back on. Then you want to click filter blur and then you want to click Gaussian blur and then use your little slider to decide how much of a blur you want on your your on the inside of your thing um if you want your corners not so bold do you want them a little lighter use your opacity tool right there and just change it and then you want to save as say I wanted to save this picture you want to go to file and you want to save as and then when you save it save it as a JPEG and then just type in speech and then just save it but you want to do a save as oh wait no you want to do a save as because you don't want to mess up your original picture. Because say you want to do something else, all you have, and you still, you know, if you just save it, it's going to save it to your original copy. So you don't want to mess your original copy up. Um, I'm gonna, I will put the short written version instructions in the down bar, in the um, description box. And you can also check out our blog, and I will post written, um, thorough written instructions on there as well. Um, our website is www.mysticlittle-spirits.com and um, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that it's very helpful for you and I will see you guys later. Bye!